Hello everyone. Today I will be discussing the paper titled What Music Makes Us Feel, At Least 13 Dimensions Organize Subjective Experiences Associated with Music Across Different Cultures by Cohen and colleagues. There are two separate experiments in this paper. However, today I will be focusing on the most significant one. Music is a quintessential cornerstone in societies across the world. It is no secret that music has the power to elicit strong emotions within us. This is something that is well known and accepted, highlighted through the many sad hours and hype up playlists you can find on Spotify. However, despite the fact that this is well known, it is not deeply studied. Whilst this is interesting to know, there is a deeper significance to this research that goes beyond just being aware that music can affect your emotions. The findings of this research can help to inform future inquiries, which range from the etiology of affective disorders to the neurological basis of emotions. As such, this research into the connection between music and emotions is important in order to better comprehend the emotions that can be evoked through music. Additionally, this paper also works to understand how these emotions may be consistent across different cultures in order to establish a basis to understand whether these results are universal or solely focused in one cultural group. Whilst there is existing prior research in this field, it has limitations, including small stimulus sets, which preclude the comparison of competing models of experience, narrow ranges of emotional states studied, and a lack of cultures studied throughout these research papers. Further, a key difference in this research is the use of solely instrumental music. Some previous studies utilized music that included lyrics, which can alter the results by including semantic content within the songs. For example, songs that have lyrics about heartbreak and pain are more likely to easily elicit sad feelings than the same instrumentals without those lyrics. Therefore, the aim of this experiment is to understand which feelings are associated with music and to see whether this translates across both American and Chinese cultures. Now, at the beginning of this presentation, I played a sound, which from this experiment has been associated with the feeling of triumph. I played this sound in an effort to raise the positive and magnetic feelings you were experiencing going into listening to this presentation. But now let's look at the methodology to understand how that actually works. The methodology utilized for this study takes place as follows. Each participant in the study heard sections of 1,841 music samples. They were then asked to judge the samples in one of two formats. The first group of participants were asked to choose the feelings that were evoked in them for each music sample from a list of 28 emotion categories. These categories included beautiful, goosebumps, eerie, indignant, and romantic. The second group of participants rated each music sample on 11 scales designed to measure their broad effective features. The researchers then utilized this data from these two different groups in order to characterize the semantic space of subjective experience for each music sample. The semantic space approach of subjective experience categorizes each music sample by three distinct properties, conceptualization, dimensionality, and distribution. Conceptualization is what kinds of concepts most accurately describe our feelings. Is it specific emotions such as fear or dreaminess, or is it affective features such as valence or arousal? Dimensionality is the range of feelings that are actually experienced. How many distinct feelings are we feeling at one particular point in time? Distribution is how these feelings which are evoked by the music are actually distributed. Are they in discrete clusters or are they upon a continuous gradient? In order to determine the total number of distinct emotional experiences preserved across the two cultural groups, the researchers used a method known as Principal Preserved Component Analysis, also known as PPCA. PPCA works by extracting the combinations of attributes that match across the US and Chinese participants to determine which distinct feelings associated with music are consistent across these cultures. The results found that there were 13 clear subjective feelings that were elicited by participants of both cultures. These feelings can be seen now on the screen and they range from amusing to dreamy all the way to scary and fearful. 
These results indicate that there is a clear connection between the music samples and specific feelings such as amusement and fear, and that this connection is clearer than the one between music samples and general effective features like valence and arousal. Therefore, it is more plausible that judgments of effective features are constructed from the experiences felt by these specific emotions rather than the other way around. This study also used a T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding system, also known as TSNE, to project the data into a 2D space that largely preserves the local distances. This is used to determine whether the identified emotions were distributed on a continuous gradient or found in separate clusters. As you can see from the image on this previous slide, the emotions that are being felt by the participants are spread across all of the different categories. And this can be seen as helping to inform future understandings of the subjective experiences taking place upon this gradient. This research also found more connections between the specific harmonic and melodic intervals which connect to certain feelings. For example, indignant or defiant music tends to involve a growl-like timbre, while scary or fearful music tends to involve harmonic dissonance. Now, there are several implications from this research including the fact that specific emotions can be elicited from music, indicating that music samples can be utilized to control and manipulate our emotions to certain degrees. This research also helps to further the link between aesthetic stimuli and feelings, which leaves the door open for further research to be conducted into how stimuli such as dance, poetry, or paintings can also elicit emotions. Thank you for listening.